G'day guys, welcome back. I had a workshop yesterday on Easter Sunday. It's a lovely workshop, great way to spend the day because I was all alone anyway, so I had some ladies come and paint with me. One of the ladies did this painting here. Isn't it gorgeous? I love those colours. Her name is Amit. Hi Amit. Hi Seagal. <laughs> Amit and Seagal came up together. So isn't this absolutely gorgeous? And I love when people come to the class and they use different colours that I wouldn't think to put together. So she tilted the whole thing first and then torched because she didn't want big cells. And um, I guess being relatively new to pouring, it was a, it's a safe bet, you know, torching afterwards because you don't have to worry about your cells overstretching. I'm just going to put this away under the table here so it's safe for her. And she, she took inspiration from my diagonal pour. I'll show it to you. Hopefully you guys saw this one being made. So I think that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or oh, seven or nine, I can't remember now, cups and I dragged them on the diagonal. I tilted and then I torched up lines like that because I wanted to keep the stripes. So that's what I did. Uh, she has pretty much used the same colors as that, the green, the turquoise, the uh, red oxide, um, but no, no white. I think I had some white in it. You can just see it up there. So she hasn't put the white in. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do another one of those in those colours, but I'm just going to do, I'm not going to do a diagonal, I'm just going to do the five flips. And I think, because I haven't done it for ages, I'm going to torch before I start tilting. I haven't done it for ages. Now I'm going to get straight into it because I talk way too much and my videos are way too long. Um, one, two, three, one, oops, one or two, that was a lot. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I think it was three I was putting in. And give them a really good stir. My pouring medium is the same look that I've been using. My 60% glue, 40% water. So, well, I guess I could shorten them down by adding the silicone first and stirring. And so you guys didn't have to watch this. But a lot of people like watching from go to woe. And then others just think, oh, you talk too much, woman, get a riddle on. You just can't please everybody, can you? So no oil in the black because the black is a an opaque colour. Um, the turquoise is also opaque. If you're using a good quality paint, it should tell you on the bottle the opacity, whether it's a opaque or semi-transparent or transparent colour. And it's good to mix them up. Have some of each in your holes. You'll get a better result. If you've mixed up your semi-transparents with your opaques. Just the density of the paint will help the cells be pretty. Like I know that, for instance, a yellow is usually a semi-transparent. And it makes a lovely bright ring around an opaque cell. Because it sort of floats up around the outside of the cell and makes a ring. So that's where you get those multicolored cells from. And the silicone does help. The silicone wants to rise to the surface and create the cell, as oil does. Always wants to rise to the top. And it brings the paint with it. Made a little bit extra of this green, this aqua green, because I really like it. I need an extra 10 grams of each. So I started with 60 grams of pouring medium and 60 grams of paint in all my colours. And then 
the turquoise and the red oxide, I had to add an extra 10 grams of paint. And the others, I had to add an extra 10 grams of pouring medium. The chocolate brown, I had to add quite a bit of water as well because it was really thick. So start with equal parts and then either add paint or add water to get the right consistency and you're just looking for a little mound on a mound. Not a big ribbon on top of a ribbon, just a little mound on a mound. Like when you get wet sand and you drizzle it to make that little castle. One of those little wriggles or drizzles on top of each other, that's what you're looking for. Everyone's going to go to the beach now and get some wet sand out and have a play. <laughs> That's the, what you're looking for. And also, there's no point saying, oh, you need a mound on a mound, because if you have your stick about an inch from the surface, you're going to get a mound on a mound. But if you hold your stick way up here, you're not going to get a mound on a mound, because the weight of the paint dropping in is going to make a, a little dent, and you're not going to have a mound at all. So... Just be aware of that. When I say mound on a mound, my stick is about an inch. The bottom of my stick is about an inch from the surface of the paint. And then if I get a mound, then that's a good thing. If my stick's way up high, I won't get a mound because the weight of the paint propelling itself into the paint below will not leave a mound. Does that make sense to you guys? It's very scientific, isn't it, pouring? It really is. Just starting at this end from some of them because the cups at this side always end up with more paint. I tend to put more in as I'm starting and then as I go along I have less paint in them. Easter Monday today. I've got the day off work. My daughter's still up from down south. Christy, she's come for the long weekend. So the two of us were made pancakes this morning. Fluffy buttermilk pancakes, yum, with maple syrup, yum. My dogs each had a pancake. Well, they shared a pancake. They didn't each get one. Because <laughs> they can't eat chocolate, so they, they got a pancake for Easter. And doing this pour, and then I'm gonna go and jump in the shower and head off to my parents' place for lunch. They want to catch up with us as well. My other daughter will join us for lunch, so yeah, that'll be fun. And then hubby, he gets back on Wednesday. He finishes work tomorrow night, Tuesday night he finishes at about 6pm. And then he'll jump in the car and he'll drive probably for about five hours. He'll pull over on the side of the road and he'll have a little sleep maybe two or three hours and then he'll start driving again for another five hours and then get home here probably about um, six seven o'clock in the morning depending on how long he sleeps for so catch up with him and maybe go to a movie because he's gone for two weeks at a time and I'm on my own that's why I get to talk to you guys. <laughs> Someone to talk to. Otherwise, I'm just talking to my dogs, and that's not really a good thing, is it? Crazy dog woman talking to her dogs. No less crazy than talking to you guys out there. But I enjoy it. I enjoy talking to you guys, and I enjoy listening to all your comments and messages from you. It's great. Righto, let's... Do this. One, two, three, four, and five. Beautiful. Just even those out. I like to make sure they're as close to the top as possible so that when I drag, I'm getting as much coverage as possible. I did spray the cups with silicone oil. So Christy and I on Easter Saturday we went to the movies and we saw The Weeping Women, Woman. I think in the States it's called 
something else. Spanish name, La La Orola or something. Anyway, they thought that would be too difficult for us Aussies. Apparently it is. Uh, the Weeping Woman. It was really scary. I love horror movies. Um, you know, suspense. It was the sixth one in The Conjuring. I love all that sort of thing. And for me, if I know it's a good movie, I'll get goosebumps. And I got goosebumps three times. It was really suspenseful. Loved it. Right, let's do this. Oh, I was trying to spin it a bit. Oh, I spun you right off, didn't I? Now I've got a little bit left in this first one. Just pop you over the edge there, cover my corner. And I'll pop a little bit on this one as well, cover that little corner. Just so it's done. And I'll move these out of the way. I don't like them being in the way. Get rid of them all. How pretty are those colours? I don't know whether trying to spin them was a good idea, but... Now, I know I said I'm not going to tilt. I'm not going to torch until after I've tilted, but I do want to just cover in these gaps here. And then I'm happy to tilt that way. Try not to get the paint to run all the way off, if at all possible. Not that easy, because as you're doing this, it's running off the sides anyway, isn't it? That doesn't always work. But I am going to torch now uh, because I've been getting I mean I've been getting nice cells but I've been getting you know relatively small ish cells so I'm just gonna go for it and get some bigger cells this time just because I haven't done one of these for a long time but I'm gonna go selective torching just very minimal to begin with and then just wait Give that a minute. But aren't the colours just gorgeous? So pretty. These are moving in towards each other a little bit. Got a lot of that red oxide there. Oh, I didn't show you my colours. Red oxide. I was talking too much about the movies. It's no wonder my videos are too long. I don't shut up, do I? Aqua green. Burnt umber. Turquoise, flesh, and black. Alright, let's go again. Is that no doubt a little bit of dried paint from the edges of the containers Concentrating, concentrating, I'm trying not to over torch, I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm doing here. I really concentrate and not 
over torch. Watch carefully what I'm doing. Get too close and that's it. You can't take them back. You get too many cells, you get caterpillars. And that's it. It's ruined, in my opinion. Okay. Rightio, I, I did get a bit close in a couple of areas. You can see I've got tiny little cells popped up and a bit of a caterpillary thing. But the areas where I've gone higher up, the cells are more separated and no caterpillars. And as I start stretching, oh look, they've all joined up. As I start, start stretching, they will um, they'll grow. Now, this bit here, I like, I like all my areas to be the same distance. This one's quite deep, so I'm going to see if I can find some paint. Oh, just scraps, really. I never leave any paint. Oh. There's a bit of a blob. Should always leave a little bit. Otherwise, that area's got a lot of, air, of um, stretching to do. I'll just have to do it. I haven't got enough paint left. All right, take your time. Left and right, you don't want the paint to go over the long edge yet. You want to use the weight of the paint to cover your triangle areas there, your little blank triangle areas first. See what I mean about this triangle being bigger? Those ones have already gone over and this one hasn't because this was a bigger triangle. So if you possibly can, fill that area in with a little bit of leftover paint. Try not to pour dirty paint from your cup in there. Just try and maybe keep a little bit of excess paint. Okay, it's just gone over and back. All right, I'm going to turn it around and do the other side. These are quite deep as well, but I don't really have any paint left. Off we go. Paint's got a long way to go. You can see where it is. It's still in the middle of the canvas. Got a long way to go to work its way all the way down. And this is where your, your top cells can start over stretching. But just go slowly. Try and go left and right to cover those triangles before you go straight over the edge. Use the weight of the paint, the zigzagging, to help you go over. And done. They're not that big, are they? The cells, they're not huge. I was kind of expecting them to be a bit bigger, but they're not. I'll turn it around again because the weight of the paint is all up here now. See the cells are quite small. Oh, I've got dirty gloves. And here they're quite big. So I'm just going to take the weight of the paint back to the middle. Okay. There we go. Pretty. I think I've probably got too much of this this colour. It's taken over quite a lot there. Now I'm just going to torch just over here and over here where there's not much in the way of cells, just very lightly. But I do love that pop of um, the red oxide that's come through. Really pretty. Do some selective torching as to where you, oh I got too close there. Look at that, I got way too close. That's what happens when you get too close. You get this colony and then you get a caterpillar. So you're better off going a bit higher up and you get these these cells here, how they're more separated and they're a bit bigger. I think it's just the more gentle heat and it takes longer to go down. It brings the paint up slowly and they they seem to be bigger, whereas if you get too close, you get little tiny ones. 
doesn't make sense, does it? But that's how it works. Now I'm just going to fix my corners. My sides. I have a little tool under. It's a little bit busy. I think I just maybe over torched a little bit, even though I didn't want to over torch. I, I did. So hard not to over torch. <laughs> I still over torch all the time. A little bit of turquoise just there. Run the tool underneath. and I need a little bit on my corner here too. Let's pop a bit of paint there. Okay. What do you think? Do you like that? I like how I've got those little pops of black that have come through. Um, I do think maybe the, the green was a bit too much. I probably didn't need to make up any more. I should have just made up equal amounts because uh, the green's really taken over. Kind of lost the turquoise a bit love these pops of the red oxide that are coming through so I'll take you down for a close-up and then I have to get ready to go out do I want to do any more to it I would like to open up my cells a bit that's all I want to see if I can get that red little, some of that red corner off. I know, I probably shouldn't do it. My cells are going wobbly. I should just leave it. You guys were telling me, weren't you? I heard you. Don't do it. Don't do it, they said. I shouldn't have. They've gone a bit wobbly now. I was just trying to open them up. See over here, they're really open and bright. And over here, they're sort of smaller. Um, I probably didn't need so much paint on the surface either. them a bit bigger that's all mm, that's better these ones that were all squished up in the corner are, are doing better now probably should have done that before <laughs> while I was tilting over that way right, give that another little run around underneath since I've moved paint a bit yeah, that's better. Better, righto, let me take you in for a close-up. Oh, you're not very centred, are you? How did I do that wrong? Righto, so here's the lovely red oxide against the turquoise. I feel like I want to do it again and not put so much of the green in next time. Nice big cells. So what do you guys think? Do you like me tilting the whole canvas or actually half the canvas first and then torching? So my cells are more round. They're not necessarily as big but they, they're more round. Or do you like me to flip the cups? torch straight away and then tilt um, and then the cells tend to be a little bit more wobbly but they're bigger what do you think let me know in the comments what you prefer I started when I started pouring I started just you know flipping the cups over and torching just have to do this to get out of that light um, but then recently I've been tilting halfway and then torching so 
There you go. Let me know what you prefer. Love this half here. That's the best half. Hasn't got as much green in it. Okay, thanks for watching. I've got to go and get ready to go out. Bye for now.